time and effort, uh, um, you know, to the social justice and, and the players' coalition uh, causes, and, and for better or worse, they've taken center stage in the country so much this off season. Uh, I know you're also do, doing the job with CNN. I don't know if rewarding is the right word because I know it's still a work in progress, but just how meaningful is it to you to, to, to see how much impact and, and how important a role you're playing after you've dedicated so much of your time to that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, where we are right now as a, as a country, as um, a league and uh, peers and players, um, I'm definitely proud of kind of being a part of that initial groundwork, but I'm also um, energized because of how many other people have obviously joined um, kind of this, this movement and, and fight for social justice and demanding that things change significantly uh, and rapidly. And so, um, you know, myself and a lot of other people sacrificed um, a lot to kind of lay that groundwork and it really stood on the shoulders that came before us. And I think we're at a moment right now where, um, you know, we, we can significantly push um, that agenda forward. Malcolm, uh, you, the last time we talked to you, you described yourself as a natural introvert. Um, is it something that you, you know, you've had to try to teach yourself or, or encourage yourself or, or learn how to, to, to be an extrovert and, and to be such a, a face of this cause, to be out front so much? Well, I think a lot of it comes with with just understanding my own limits and limitations and capabilities, um, knowing that, you know, a lot of this work um, takes a lot of energy and a lot of outpouring. Um, so I've, I've done a better job or had to learn how to really take care of myself as well. Um, but also, you know, in, any any movement has multiple heads and, and, and multiple people doing different things. Anybody or any organization that's led by one person is more than likely a cult. Um, and so I've also had the, the um, benefit of being around um, a lot of guys who, who spread that work around. So it's not all on my shoulders. We got guys doing phenomenal work all around the country. Um, and so I'm, 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 you know, while my face is out there a lot, I'm, I'm a member of a larger team of guys that are doing some great work. Next question from Amy Just. Yeah, just following up on that, um, with you being a natural introvert, at one point in your career, did you feel comfortable taking on that leadership role, that vocal leadership role? Uh, well, I mean, in, in the field, it's, it's a lot different than, than in person. Um, so it's a lot easier for me to be a leader and, and vocal uh, on the field. That's where a lot of my personality comes out. Um, and I've been a captain on every team that I've been on uh, since I've started this game. So... Um, that has not been a, a challenge for me, but stepping out more into the public eye and, and, and being kind of a voice uh, in that regard definitely t took a lot of um, preparation and, and, and really, I think, courage just to, to fight my own battles, to, to unlock, you know, or free my own mind, to, to detach myself from the criticisms that you know, we're just athletes and don't have anything to contribute to the conversation or that we're not the experts, we don't know enough. Um, all of those things, you know, you hear and it took me a minute to break out of that. But once um, I realized that I'm just as intelligent as all of these other people who, who are in these rooms, that I have something to offer to the social di the public dialogue, um, it, it made it a lot easier. Next question is from John DeShazer. Well, Malcolm, two questions. First, how comfortable are you that it seems like that leadership role has, if not overtaken, certainly caught up to the, the assets you provide to a football team? What do you mean? It, it, you know, your social justice work seems to be at, you know, almost overshadowing your football career. You've had a pretty solid football career. Yeah, I mean, if, if people know me more for what I do off the field than on the field, I think that's a win for my life. <laughs> uh, I'm much more concerned that the, the impact I have in this world than I, than I am um, with the, the impact I have on the field. While um, the impact I have on the field is very important to me and it's what I love to do. I love this game and love playing it. Um, I'm actually very okay with me being known more for um, my con contribution to society than to the game. And, and second, the rejoin with the Saints on the field. You, you've been with the team on the field now for several weeks now. How has that been what you thought it would be in terms of the talent you felt like you play with, 
uh, and the, the, the role you would play with that talent? I mean, honestly, you know, stepping back into, you know, the Saints facility, the organization has been very nostalgic for me, obviously being, you know, the place that I started at. But, um, you know, this is probably the most talented team I've, I've been a part of um, since the 2017, you know, Eagles team. And, you know, I told everybody when I stepped in, it was very apparent very early. I'm like, I don't understand how you guys haven't won a Super Bowl in the last three seasons. Um, there's just that much um, talent, you know, on the roster. And so, uh, as a leader, it's just looking at like, well, how do we not mess this up? How do we continue to keep guys engaged and motivated and constantly striving to compete and improve um, and, and grow? And I think that's the, the the largest part is how do we get over that hump? Um, and I know that's one of the roles that, that I was brought here to to um, you know produce. So that's that's really what I'm focused on now. Next question is from Christopher Donalds. Hey, Malcolm, you were facing Drew Brees in practice now after facing him on the field uh, on the other side of the team uh, for a few years in Philly. But what are you seeing out of Drew's arm in practice as we go through this age 41 season here? Um, he's, still, he's got a live arm. You know, he's, he's obviously been, uh, if not the most, one of the more accurate uh, passers in his league for feels like almost a decade now. Um, and now that's no different. Um, you know, he's still able to throw the ball down the field. That's not going to be, he's not going to be, you know, throwing 60 yard bombs every, every other play. Um, but his accuracy is, 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 his uh, cornerstone and his ability to make smart decisions to take care of the football better than almost any quarterback out there, um, is how he's made a living in this league. And I don't see any difference, uh, even at his age right now. Next question is for Mike Triplett. Malcolm, how has the relationship with Drew evolved off the field? Obviously, that that was uh, is that something that's going to be ongoing that, that that continues to need to be healed, or is that something you feel like you guys really hashed out and got past already? Well, I feel like you know, me and Drew were friends long before uh, 2020, um, and, and and obviously you know the dialogue that he and I had to have um, publicly, but also privately, I think was. Um, important for the country to do and important for us to do um and i think that even moving past that moment it's going to be ongoing but uh, as far as a, as a friendship and a, the willingness for both of us to engage in that dialogue has been um has been cooperative and, and and been encouraging do you think that that that's a hurdle this team needs to overcome or you think the way everybody responded in in the days after that was a positive that that will actually kind of make this team stronger. Yeah, no, I think if anything, the, the team is probably closer for it um, because we've had to have those, ha had to have those tough conversations. And, and oftentimes those adversities or those, um, you know, intimate kind of um, engagements bring people closer. And I think this is no exception. Next question is for Amy Just. Yeah, with this being uh a typical off season um, and then a typical training camp. Have y'all had a moment yet on the field where you feel like things have clicked, even though you've only had, you know, three, you know, full pads practices and you know some walkthroughs and stuff before that? Yeah, I think defensively we were, re we were really you know excited as uh, um, about the last few days that we've had. Um, you know, guys have been playing very complimentary, been getting around the ball a lot. Um, the, the rush is complementing the coverage and vice versa. Um, so I, I think there are some encouraging, you know, we're headed in an encouraging direction, but um, obviously a, a lot of time between now and, and, and week one. So uh, the goal is just getting better every day. But I do think that the, you know, how far we've come so far um, is, is, is where we want to be. Next question is for Jeff Duncan. Hey, Malcolm, uh, this is your second go-round with the team, as you alluded to earlier. Uh, when you were drafted back, this was before the Super Bowl, before the, the organization had really kind of taken off. So you have a very unique perspective coming back into the organization. I'm just curious what your early impressions have been both on and off the field of where the Saints are at compared to where, you, where they were before you got drafted. Well, I think, you know, surprisingly, a lot of – the culture that was built um, early on in, in Sean Payton's tenure here, as well as um, Drew Brees, um, 
you know, a lot of those, the, the cornerstones of the, to the culture here have, have remained. Um, Dennis Allen, the D coordinator, was, you know, uh, a DB coach uh, around that time. So he's very, very entrenched in, in, in kind of those early uh, uh, culture, that early culture building. And so it's, it's uh, actually surprising to come back and see a lot of the same things being, being talked about, a lot of the same situations, the expectations, um, the, the way they go about practicing. Um, all of these things, you know, lend to lead to winning, um, and and that culture has been in place for for a while. And there's no surprise why this has been the winning winningest team in the last few years. This question's from Brett Martell. Brett, hey Malcolm, uh, you know the expression is "timing is everything." Strike while the iron's hot. And in that light, um, do you feel like you've been pulled towards? the social justice movement um, more frequently this year than in the past? And how do you approach that in terms of balancing um, with football? Is that, a, is that difficult? Is that something you're still navigating? Well, I mean, it's something I've been doing now for going on four years. Um, so I, I think I've gotten it <laughs> down packed. But uh, obviously with, with um, being a correspondent for a contributor for CNN and, and just all that's happening right now, um, in our country with the, the pandemic and um, social unrest and this election coming up. Um, obviously, there, there are a lot more demands for that voice, but, um, you know, I've been a part of, you know, this and, and being able to balance um, having an impact socially but and also handling my business on the field. So I have no concerns there. Next question is from Doug Mouton. Doug? Yeah, hey, Malcolm, how good are Marshawn Lattimore and Janoris Jenkins as a tandem? And could you talk about maybe from your vantage point what makes them special? Yeah, well, I think, you know, for, for me and, you know, without knocking anybody I've played with, I just I don't think I've played with a tandem, you know, who are both as talented um, as Marshawn and Janoris. Just, you know, Janoris being a veteran who can run with anybody, can change direction and cover anybody, um, and, and who I think is really motivated and hungry right now uh, to watch him just in practice against our receivers has been impressive. And then I think Marshawn, you know, really can be um, the best corner in this league. Uh, it's just about, you know, consistency and, and, and really uh, bringing that out of him. But he's, he's been locked in and focused. Um, and I think he knows that everybody expects him to be the best on every single play. Um, and so being able to have that talent on the outside um, as a safety um, lends to a lot of freedom and a lot of ability to to manipulate the defense and make plays. So um, I'm very very excited, you know, for you know anybody. When anytime you get two corners like that as a, as a safety and as a pass rusher, you know, you get excited because there's more opportunity uh, to make plays. Okay, last questions from Cat Terrell. Cat. Hey Malcolm, I was just wondering who are the most competitive competitive receivers you've ever faced in practice specifically. In practice, um, uh, I, I got to do a joint practice with uh, the Baltimore Ravens once, um, and Steve Smith was there. Uh, and he's probably the most competitive receiver I've played against in general. Um, but just the early parts of, of this camp, uh, I think Michael Thomas is probably fitting that, that bill. Um, He's somebody who's who's very very passionate. You know, you you think the first rep of practice is, you know, the the first rep of the Super Bowl. Um, he wants to win everything, and I you know I think that that attitude makes every demands it out of everybody else, uh, and kind of raises that competition level. So I think they're they're you know he's probably that guy on this team. Okay, we're all set. Thanks for the time, Malcolm. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Yep.